First, let us know about the author. Munin Borkotoki, a renowned writer and critic, and a pioneering journalist of Assam, was born in Jorhat in 1915. His father Rai Sahab Durgadhar Borkotoki initially served as a divisional inspector of schools under the British. However, he left the job in solidarity with the non-cooperation movement during the struggle for Indian independence. The maternal lineage of Borkotoki traces back to Anandaram Dhekial Fukan, pioneer of the 19th century Assamese Renaissance. Borkotoki matriculated from Jorhat Government High School in 1932 and passed his intermediate examination from Jorhat College in 1934. He pursued higher studies in Cotton College and later also in Dhaka and in Kolkata. Borkotoki completed his BA in 1938 to 1939, winning the Prabhat Kumar Das Gold Medal for topping the list of distinguished graduates of Calcutta University that year. Now, let's understand the essay. The biographical account of Krishna Kanta Handik is taken from A Munin Borkotoki Miscellany. In this book, the writer makes an effort to analyze the great scholar, Krishna Kanta Handik, under the percept, scholar par excellence. According to Borkotoki, the excellence of K.K. Handik as a scholar can't be truly judged by his sparse literary output. Despite only three number of books to Handik's credit, he had earned worldwide reputation as an Indologist and Sanskritist. Do it seems that a critic must have some extraordinary knowledge to assess a scholar like K.K. Handik. Munin Borkotoki uses to alibis for his effort to assess that great scholar. 1. What does he know Sanskrit or even scholarship? Who only Sanskrit and scholarship knows? Secondly, despite being a Sanskrit scholar, Handik wrote mainly in English and he took his master's degree at Oxford in modern history, not in Sanskrit. Handik wrote scholarly articles, reviews, introductions, prefaces not only in English but also in other European languages. However, K.K. Handik's reputation as a classical scholar rests on his three books, the Naisadhacharita, Yasa Stilet, and Indian Culture, and the Setuban. The first and the third books are model specimens of translation of ancient Sanskrit and Prakrit texts. The Naisadhacharita and the Setuban prove the exceptional caliber of Handik. Because of the complexity of the classical Sanskrit texts, no one had tried hitherto to render them to other modern languages. So, Handik's translations in these two books are path-breaking. Thus, it established his status as a scholar par excellence. The Yasa Stilet and Indian culture is a cultural commentary. Handik's real achievement lies in making ancient wisdom reachable to modern world. Munin Borkotoki expresses regret that Handik deserved better recognition and greater appreciation from the rest of the country and the outside world. He was offered only the Padma Bhushan, whereas he deserved more than that. However, the vast ambit of his knowledge and the scholarly contributions made him attain a broader Indian identity. Munin Borkotuki begins the essay comparing K.K. Handik with German Orientalist and bibliophile Max Muller. Similarly, he concludes by placing Handik in the same class with the likes of Anand Kumaraswamy and Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. K.K. Handik died in 1982. And the writer concludes saying, When comes such another? Thus, he expresses his sense of doubt about future mourning the loss of such a peerless mind.